Hello everyone, this is Richard here. Um, this is just a bit of an update on the Big Box 3D printer that I've been uh, testing and experimenting with. Um, I had uh, a couple of weeks of playing with it and I've been going through the different settings, setting up some slicer profiles for it and printing of various things. I haven't, print, I haven't posted lots of stuff I've printed because, to be honest, it prints well and you don't want to see lots and lots of things um, uh, that, that uh, necessarily is just coming off a 3D printer. So my main objective is to try and find uh, some issues with it um, or anything that isn't quite um, going to be as straightforward uh, to use for anyone that's getting this printer maybe for the first time. So what I'm trying to do is uh, eliminate some of the issues that might be caused uh, before this goes into full production and help the big box team a little bit uh, on that side of things. So I've had a couple of uh, issues with the, the Z axis, uh, but that was really down to the fact that this is a very early prototype that I was I was uh, given. So they had some interesting Z axis drives with a little bit of uh, Ninja Flex in there to allow for some some uh, um, some play in the in the uh, movement. And I've changed those to my own uh, uh, very more simple design, uh, which makes it work. So I, I haven't really got a problem with that anymore. Um, during that, what was really interesting was I was pushing the machine pretty hard and testing the travel speeds, different travel speeds of the machine um, and seeing what sort of uh, vibrations and oscillations and, and resonances I was getting into the frame and everything else. Um, about a week ago, what, a, what happened was that things started to loosen um, on the mechanical side and that's really um, quite interesting because there was some serious resonances setting up in the machine and causing uh, a few things to come loose. The, the biggest problem I had was that, that these uh, couplers at the back which um, drive the, uh, the, Z, the, the Y axis forwards and backwards driven by this motor at the back here on this, on this uh, smooth rod, the two ones at the end, the actual grip screws that hold uh, the, um, the pulley onto the, to the rod was starting to come loose and slip. And I tell you, this is one of the horriblest things to happen to a, a new user because they only slip a little bit and they cause you print issues and skipping and all sorts of things. And it gets slowly worse, but it, it sort of tends to suddenly happen. So you'll be printing perfectly fine one day and then the next day you'll start seeing some issues and you'll try very hard to try and combat that with all sorts of setting changes, thinking you're over extruding or your Z axis wrong or something else. And in the end, it comes down to the fact that it, you may have something mechanical that's become loose and pulleys are always the easiest one to, to double check. The way I checked it, before I took this top off, I've taken the top top piece of acrylic off basically just to allow you a bit more easier access and to see what was going on but the way I checked it is I grabbed hold of this axis and I wiggled it left uh, forwards and backwards each side and it moved by about um, two or three millimeters and it was wobbly and that tells me that the the back two uh, pulleys are slipping on the on the rod. That's not something you can easily diagnose unless you understand how the printer's set up and how it's supposed to be totally rigid. This is all screwed back in nice and tight now and it, it can't move at all. But before I'd screwed those and tightened them back up it was it was wobbling. Um, and it something you might miss. So for anyone that's got this style of printer or any any sort of arrangement like this and there's quite a few different open source arrangements around this type of thing just be very aware of the types of issues you can have with pulleys on, on smooth rods. Um, I haven't actually confirmed whether or not they've got uh, a grind on the rods to allow the, the pulleys to sit nicely and the grub screws to, to really bite in. I don't think they have, which is a bit of an issue. So I'm going to be doing uh, a little bit more investigation there just to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, I confirmed this a week ago because I tightened all these up and then I ran it again. Again, pretty hard. I was running it at slightly higher print uh, travel speeds than maybe it's going to be happy with, but I wanted to see what would happen. Um, these were around 170 millimeters um, uh, speeds for travel. So it's uh, a little bit more than it's comfortable with. It's, it's more comfortable with 140, 150. Uh, but it should be able to handle with that when everything's right. The, hap the thing that happened again was that after about six days of printing, they started coming loose again, even though I'd tightened them up. So normally, whenever I build a, a printer, you use um, some type of locking uh, mechanism to put that in. And that's normally 
uh, thread lock stud and bearing fit that you can put inside to actually lock the grub screw in uh, onto there. The, the idea is not to glue this to the rod, it's, the idea is to stop the grub screw from um, uh, from coming out for, through vibrations and oscillations and various resonances and that's exactly what you can do. You can also use super glue, super glue is a good one, or even nail varnish. Nail varnish works just as well as uh, to do this sort of thing. So it's generally just a few a few good tips really. Um, the other thing that I also had a couple of issues with on the machine is that uh, because these parts are made of PLA and, and they're plastic um, a lot of the fittings that are, that are clamping everything together use uh, M3 screws and what they do, this, this type of plastic actually creeps and it sort of expands slightly over time. Nothing really to do with temperature, although there is some temperature effects involved in, in these types of systems, but they start to come a bit loose. So also I noticed that a lot of these clamps and clamps around here and the clamps at the back here that were holding the rods in place were also just slightly sagging out and causing some issues. So I've tightened all those up as well and I'll keep an eye on those. Um, again, you can apply a little bit of super glue and things to fix these nuts and bolts in place, but actually it may need a little bit more thought on the design of some of these. Uh, and that comes to my last point, which is the reason why I took the top off uh, originally before I just started investigating whether or not I still had the issue with the uh, the slipping pulleys was to have a more of a closer look at this carriage on here. And the, the problem I've got with the carriage is uh, that it's it wraps around the linear bearing. So you've got a linear bearing sat on there, it's a longer one on here, and actually you have a clamp that goes all the way around and it's screwed and tightened at the bottom, which means that to get that carriage off, you have to take all of this apart to be able to physically slide it off the rods, and even the rods have to come out of here. So to me that I really, I've sort of already mentioned this to the big box team and said, I'll be changing that carriage to something that, that makes it a lot easier to be able to expand uh, carriage width and add more extruders and put the extruders on a bit easier. So the way I always do this is, is I have um, a clamp at the top and a clamp at the bottom and then bolt each side. That also helps to stop this, this creep problem because you're, you're not clamping just one point on the um, uh, on the plastic and pulling and pulling and pulling you're actually clamping two sections onto the linear bearing and that also means that you can take it off drop the bottom out and then pull the whole thing off which is a lot easier for people to do when they want to be able to change the carriage and change extruders and experiment with things and this is supposed to be a hacking machine so it should be easy to be able to get that carriage off and put on a dual carriage or a wider carriage or whatever else um, there's one long linear bearing in here which is fine, it would allow you to put um, a quite a decent sized carriage on, maybe better to add another linear bearing at the same time if you're going to take it all apart. So my objective probably even before I put this back on the top is going to be looking at how I can quickly change that carriage to be a little bit more like some of my quick fits or snap fits or mag fits that I've used on other machines as well. So I quite like the idea of that and, and that's something that I think is just worthwhile bearing in mind uh, when you first put your machine together. Uh, if, if there isn't a, a different carriage already available by the time that you get your machine, or if you do get one of these, um, then maybe you know have a think about how, how you're gonna do dual uh, carriage printing and, and dual extrusion and things in the future, uh, just so you don't have to necessarily take the entire, this entire carriage has to be lifted off and all, all taken apart for it to um, uh, to be able to do that. So that's my main sort of little niggles at the moment. The machine's printing absolutely perfectly and as soon as I put all this back together make sure all these are nice locked in and tight uh, and I've added my super glue on my stud and bearing fit uh, everything will be nice and solid again so I should be able to print without six days later without it all sort of starting to loosen up again. Uh, bent belt tensioners I'm going to look at. I'm not really too happy about that. I did get a little bit of rubbing on the sides and a little bit of uh, chafing onto the belts. That's just because they're being not pulled quite in alignment. Uh, just just because of the printer parts and things are just not quite not quite aligned uh, perfectly in, in in with the carriage. So that's pretty much it for this update. I will be showing you a lot more of the different things I have printed on the printer, and there's been some really interesting models as well as some some decent. Uh, structural parts as well, uh, hopefully to replace parts on the printer. My uh, my main idea is really not to change the frameworks. This isn't my printer, I've only borrowed it, so I'm not going to start 
drilling or doing anything on the actual frames or changing the mechanical components but I will be changing quite a bit of the uh, plastic parts and printed parts to see what I can do to just make it a little bit easier to hack and to use and to develop with in the future. So really that's my goal, I hope that's been useful to you and I'll give another update uh, at some point in the future. Thanks for uh, watching.